my brothers and sisters in Christ, I would like to invite you to join me in prayer. Mahal kong Diyos, pinupuri ka namin at niluluwalhati namin ang iyong pangalan. Ngayon, ipinapahayag namin na ikaw ay maluwalhati sa pumamagitan ng pandemic kong ito. Na ang iyong pangalan ay makilala at ikaw ay purihin sa buong mundo. Alisin mo ang kadiliman gamit ang iyong ilaw. Mas maliwanag ang iyong ilaw kaysa sa takot sa kamatayan, pagkasira ng ekonomiya o isang mahabang kwarentenas. Sa ngayon, inihiling namin sa iyo na pagalingin ang mga may sakit at protektahan ang mga malulusog. Pigyan mo ang aming mga pinuno ng karagdagang karunungan sa paglulutas nila sa pandemyang ito at krisis sa ekonomiya. Palakasin mo ang iyong pandaigdigang simbahan. Ipakita sa amin kung paano kami makakatulong upang mapaabot ang mga pangangailangan ng mga nasa paligid namin. Pakalmahin ang aming mga takot. Unan mo kami ng iyong pag-asa, kagalakan, at kapayapaan sa patuloy namin pagtitiwala sa iyo. Gamitin mo ang pandemikong ito upang magbigay daan sa pagbabalik loob namin sa iyo. Nais namin may pakita ang iyong kaluwalhatian, kapangyarihan, at pagpapagaling. Diyos, ikaw lamang ang karapat dapat igalang, luwalhatiin at purihin. Sa iyo manalabasan namin ang bawat bagyo kasama ang COVID-19. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithful to us. Now let us sing your praise and let us lift up our hand and say,
Hallelujah. It's time for us to give today. And I believe that God is blessing us so much. So, uh, brothers and sisters, if you would like to give, there is this uh, QR code on your screens. You can also use that to transfer your gift and offering or tithe, whatever it may be. And let's give with a joyful heart. We know that God is blessing us so much and we give out of love because we know that He is good. Our Father is good. But before we give, let us just pray. Father God, we thank you that we have an opportunity to give today. We know that God has given us so very much and we love you, Lord. Thank you for all your blessings and teach us this day that we are going to use all the blessing that you have entrusted us for your glory and for showing our love to others as you have loved us. Thank you, Lord. We are going to give with a joyful heart in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us declare our offering today in account to one, two, three. Yeah? One, two, three. When we bring our offerings, we believe that the gates of heaven are open. And the blessings of the Lord are poured out. I have a better business job and education. Profit, bonus, and assets will be multiplied. Amen. God will bring all and new customers to me. All bills will be paid off. I own a house on earth and in heaven. Receiving gifts, surprises, and rewards. A soulmate will be given for those who are single. There is no barren person in our midst. And families are living in harmonies. All enemies, sickness, and loss will be rebuked from our lives, families, jobs, and our businesses. This is the time to give the offering in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When peace like a river
Shalom. Today we are so grateful and thankful to God that from wherever we are, we still can come and gather together to worship Him and to encounter Him through His Word. So let us pray. Father God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come on earth as it is on, in heaven. Father God, this morning we just pray and we are grateful for who you are. We are thankful for the life that you have given us. And this morning we come together and bring our heart, commit our heart to come in front of you and believing together, Lord God. As we come, as we worship you, as we come and study the word of God, we will encounter you. And through the encounter with you, Lord God, we will be something great born from it. When our life meet with the Spirit of God, we believe there is something powerful is going to happen in our life and not just in our personal life, but to the people around us. And Father God, we just thank you for your presence this morning. We thank you for your presence among us. We thank you that you are here. You are with us everywhere from wherever we are right now, Lord God. We put our heart together. We unite our heart together. And we believe, Lord God, that your presence are with us and we thank you for that lord and this morning we are ready we are ready to study and to encounter more and more of you through the word of god we accept it with the heart of joy with the heart of thankfulness for who you are lord thank you in the name of jesus we pray amen amen uh, i would like to introduce myself very quick my name is narvastu putri uh, I've been serving the Lord for more than 15 years. Uh, for the past 15 years, mostly I work in mission work and also training the younger generation. I have been uh, ministering ar around 12 countries, mostly Southeast Asia, and I had lived in the, the Philippines, uh, India, and Nepal for a certain amount of time. And uh, I love mission and passionate about training the younger generation because we believe the word of God has says that train the child as they go. And when they grow older, they will not depart from it. Amen? Amen. So today I would like to talk about time and season. Time and season. We will open together our Bible in the Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Maybe most of us are familiar with this passage of the Bible, Ecclesiastes 3. We will read some of the scripture. I, uh, I believe we all familiar with the scripture, so I will just highlight some of the scriptures. Uh, we have together in here the title of Ecclesiastes. In here, the title of Ecclesiastes 3 is everything has its time to everything there is a season a time for every purpose under heaven a time to be born a time and a time to die a time to plant a time to pluck what is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sue, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. So it says in the word of God, I'm sorry, that everything has its time and we will go through different time and season in our life we will highlight uh, another part of this passage in the first 11 9 10 and 11 it says the god given task this is a uh, still part of ecclesiastes 3 it says what profit has the worker from the which in which he labors i'm sorry i have seen the god-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied 11 he has made everything beautiful in its time also he has put eternity in their heart 
except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. So from the word of God, we understand that, that everything has its time. And then also we will see another scriptures in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Genesis 8, verse 22, it says, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. So we understand from the word of God that we read uh, this morning that while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night, Time and season is something that will not cease. It's something that we will go through in life. In the, if we go back to Ecclesiastes, we understand that in life, there is seasons and time that we will go through and it's inevitable. There is season that maybe we can call a good season or good time. And also there are times that we feel, it's, we feel sad Maybe we lost something, we feel disappointed, we, we feel something taken away from us, and then we call it maybe not so good, yeah? Like bad times, so, so, not so good season. But in the Word of God, it says that all of those seasons, the good and the bad, we as human, as long as we're still on earth, we will go through it. So since we know that as human, we on earth, we will have to face those things. The question is, what is the hope that we have? What is the hope that we have going through those time and seasons? We will go to uh, verse 11. I know most of us are familiar with the scripture. It says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, He has put eternity in their heart, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. Okay? So it says, what is our hope in during our time on this earth? We will go through different time and seasons in life. And it's inevitable. So what is our hope? The hope that we, will, that we see in the scripture is, is that God says in everything and if each season and each time there is a hope that he has made everything beautiful in its time. So everything that we go through, the good and the bad, God says there is something beautiful that will come out from it. So there is a hope that God gives to us. Going through every season and time in our life, there is something beautiful will come out from it. We will talk about it a little bit more later, but I want to, us to go to the next sentence of verse 11. It says, also, beside he has made everything beautiful, it says also, also he has put eternity in their heart. So the second thing is like, also God has put eternity in our heart. What is the nature of something that, something that is eternal? Uh, in different part of the Bible, in Matthew, it says, uh, lay, there is a scripture that says, lay up uh, treasures in heaven where mud and ra rush will not destroy it and thief will not come and steal it from us. So something eternal, God has put something eternal inside our heart because also in that scripture says, where is your treasure is where is your heart is. So we understand that inside our heart, God has put something eternal, which is nobody, no one can steal it from us. Nothing of human or an effort of human or anything that happened in our life in either season can destroy it, can steal it from us. So there is a assurance that God gave to us that He has put eternity in our heart. So something that is eternal, that no one can take it away from us. He has put a treasure that is eternal inside each one of us. So going through each season in our life, we understand that God there is a hope in God that 
going through it, he, he has made everything beautiful Maybe in its time. Sad, and no like one, even sad, though, though it seems really like sad or disappointed or we, feel we, lost we felt a big loss in our life, God says the eternal treasure call relationship vision that he has inside of us it's eternal like nothing not even what happened in this world can steal it from us that we can hold on that god whatever happened in my life those things that you had put inside of me cannot be still cannot be broken but it's eternal inside of us and uh, sometimes maybe when we something what we call bad happen to our life. We sometimes uh, come into a place where we ask God, like, why this has happened to me? Why it's to me, not to others? Why they, they it seems like sometimes the, the grass is greener in the other side, right? And we say, why they are, they, everything looks so good in that side? Why it's happening to me? why this has happened to me, why I have to, I already do good, I already do the things that I know is right, but sometimes we still suffer loss. And then we question why this has happened to me, God. But through the scripture, there is an assurance from God. There is a hope that in everything that we go through, belief that something beautiful is going to come out from it something beautiful you will receive in the end of it. So what we can do when we go through those different seasons in our life, especially maybe the bad one. I learned from uh, the word of God when I feel the disappointment, loss. Instead of asking God why this has happened to me, he taught me to respond it with God, this season is necessary for me. This season is necessary, needed for me to grow, to be able to, to see the seed time and the harvest time, you know. This season is needed. So my question becomes something different from before. It's instead of asking why, it's asking God how I'm going to respond. How am I going to respond facing this season. Everything that happened in our life even come out maybe from someone else's mistake, even some times it's our mistakes. We still can come to Him and come in the hope in Him alone that He has put the eternal treasure inside of us that even ourselves cannot take it away from us because God has given us that. And then we can always come back and say, God, how I'm going to go through this? What is the best respond? Uh, why our respond is important. I have a friend. Uh, he, 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 uh, he has, like right now, people like to grow uh, uh, plants, yeah, during this pandemic. And, and uh, they put in different pot, you know, and then... Uh, the same kind of uh, uh, plant uh, they put in t inside the pot and then they put in different place in the house. And then t uh, s even though it's like when they bought it in the same age, yeah, and then they put it uh, and give n same maybe nourishment and everything and they put in different pot. So it's, uh, the, they put, I'm sorry, the pot in different part of their house uh, they, the, the plant grow in different uh, result. The one that has uh, so much light and sun and all the things is grow bigger and stronger when the one that inside, it's a little bit uh, slower. So what, what is the uh, mean with the response? So we, we grow when we respond right we grow, we make ourselves grow faster and stronger, faster towards seeing the inside of us become more adult, you know. Some of the things of us, like the Word of God says, uh, abide in me, and then as we abide in Him, we will 
produce fruit, but then there is a time God will prune us, you know, from the things that is not godly. So like that also when we grow, how fast we grow is depend on how we respond towards the situation that we are facing. Either it's good or either it's bad. The way we respond, it's giving us like the growth, how fast we grow into something better, uh, something more adult, yeah, like that, uh, full grown. So it says, for all this time, there is it. There is time for we for us to see the beauty of everything. You know, there is a time for us to finally see the beauty of everything. So the way we respond is going to help us to finally come into the place where we see the beauty of each season, even in the time when we feel so devastated, so disappointed. We lost something big, but when we learn to respond right, we will see the beauty of it faster with the right response towards the situation. And then the second part is also we understand that there is an eternal, I'm sorry, there is an eternal treasure that God gave to us. So what are we going to do with this eternal treasure in us? Sometimes we, especially in pandemic, maybe we had a plan in 2020, in the beginning of the year, we had planned this, 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 this. We have, uh, we feel this vision for the things that we will go uh, and do in 2020. And then when the pandemic hit, everything changed. Uh, a lot of our plan, our vision, our dream, has to be postponed or even have to be canceled. And, uh, and then we, we sometimes confuse what now, like that, right? So we will see a different part of the scripture. It says in here, we will open the scripture in Matthew. Matthew 25. So... I do believe each one of us also familiar with the scriptures. Uh, it's about the parable of the talents. So there is a master and he has he, uh, three servants. And then to these three servants, he, give them, he gave them different amount of talent. And in the end of his trip going uh, somewhere, he came back and then he called the three servants. And then uh, there is two servants that has different uh, reward and also there is one servant that receive a different re re reward yeah so we will read that part of the reward in the matthew 5 verse 21 it says first from verse 20 sorry so he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents saying lord you delivered to me five talents look i have gained five more talents besides them and his lord said to him well done good and faithful servant you were faithful over a few things i will make you ruler over many things enter into the joy of your lord and then the first 20 and first 23, it's the very similar thing, just the different, uh, the second servant is having two talents. And then he received the same reward, which is in the first 23, his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things, enter into the joy of our Lord. So, well, Sometimes we ask what we're going to do, you know. One thing we have to believe that God has put treasures inside of us. Like I said before, no one can steal it from us. Like where mud and rust will not destroy it. Or the things of the world will not destroy it. So it says in here, part of the eternal reward is talking about when they finish is good and faithful servant. So. In this particular passage, we ask why they get this reward, good and faithful servant. What are what they had done that make them able to receive this this reward, good and faithful servant. What if we see in the scripture? What is faithfulness? You are you were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over 
many things. So faithful to what, we, what God says is not just the talents that we give and then we use it, but how with the talents that we receive, with the eternal treasure that we have, how are we going to multiply it? So what does that mean? So in each one of us, God has given us the treasures that means that each one of us in every situation, in how many talents we feel we have, God has given inside of us power of multiplication. Inside of us, there is a power of multiplication. That's why even in the, you know, in the time when we feel uh, disappointed, lost, we feel sad, we always can come back to his word and knowing that inside of us, God has put the treasures, the talents inside of us, they actually multiplied and actually can be multiplied. And this multiplication, when we multiply what is inside of us, is uh, God is pleased by it. So he's so pleased that we do that, that he's a good and faithful servant. Actually, if he's looking at uh, the word multiply, it's actually something that has been in God's hearts about us since the beginning. When he created uh, us, human being, he say, be fruitful and multiply. You know, it's not just talking about having more babies, right? Uh, but it's talking about that inside of us, there is a power that God gave to multiply. And he is pleased with that, you know, to be fruitful and multiply. So he is so happy that he say, you good and faithful servant because what the talent inside of them they multiply it they become fruitful and they multiply it and then the same thing when with the two talents so sometimes in the time like this in pandemic we may be confused what should i do now oh what i plan is gone you know i cannot do that blah 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 and then so what we can do in here we can come back to the treasure that god has inside of us and say god I know there is a, the eternal treasure that you have in me. What talent that you have given me. And I believe even in the hardest time, those talents can be multiplied. Maybe what talent or what treasure that you have inside of you, you only can remember one. It's okay. With that one thing, you can be fruitful and you can, be, you can multiply in, in every time and season, in the good and the bad everything that has been put inside of us can be multiplied and that uh, if we see in the, uh, the next scripture uh, the servant that decided to hit the talent is given by the master um, there is a word that he said when the master say what do you do uh, with with the talent and he say i was afraid and then went and hit your talent in the ground look there there you have what is yours so he say I was afraid. So fear actually is the things that stop us. Fear, there is two, two, two things about fear. There are fear that God gives to us to be alarmed. So we, we are alarmed that something is, is uh, bad or something dangerous will happen to us. But also there are the second t kind of fear, which is the feeling of timid, you know. The feeling of fear or timid inside of us will stop us from grow what treasure God give, had given us. So those fear, that feeling intimidation, the timidness that we have can stop us. So what is the uh, first uh, of fear is faith. In the time of like this, the, in the time of it's difficult time like this, when we feel fear or we feel, what should I do? Let faith rise up. Let the hope in the word of God that there is an eternal thing that he had put inside of us. And even a good and a bad time, a good and a bad season in our life. There's something beautiful, something full grown, full, fruitful that is beautiful that can come out from it. And also, we can see in, 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 in this word of God that uh, faith, faith can rise up. God through faith, I reach towards the grace that is from heaven, that is beyond my ability and my strength. Through faith, we can reach into the grace to help us, to help us in the time of need, to help us to say, God, I want to. I want to 
see the treasure inside of me and let's be fruitful and multiply. Even Jesus, when before he, uh, he left, before he rise to heaven, he said to his uh, disciple, go and uh, make disciples. Multiply, be fruitful. So inside each one of us, there is a eternal treasure. There is talent that God has given us. Maybe even in, during this pandemic, there is talents that you don't know before that you have. You can see now. Or even maybe during this pandemic, there are things with your relationship that you don't know you actually can, can, can produce something better or more fruitful in your life, in your family life, in your surrounding, born from it when you see it. Sometimes we ask, uh, what can I do to multiply it? So maybe you can play music. You can think how I'm going to something that I have in me not just for me, but I can multiply it for someone else. So as we multiply it, as we multiply it more and more, people can do it. We will see an eternal fruit coming out of it and believe as we sow, we will harvest. As we sow and then we multiply, we will harvest. Amen. So uh, we will come back to the scripture that we have before. So for everything there is a time and in verse 11 it says he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also he has put eternity in their heart except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. There are times when we actually will not understand what God is doing. There are times when we don't understand what God is doing in our life in beginning to end. But when we don't understand we always ha or have hope that going through any season of our life, God has put something eternal inside of us. Something eternal, a treasure that can be multiplied, that we can produce. And even in the first, in Genesis it say, subdue the earth, you know, and then the second thing is we know that God helped me to respond with the right way during each season of my life, the good and the bad. So I will see the beauty of each season and the beauty of each of the time that I have to go through. In our life, sometimes maybe if we feel lost, uh, we think that season is wasted. But as we see the word of God, we maybe understand that through even those lost season, we maybe lose something uh, that can be seen but we gain something inside of us. Maybe we become more mature as a person. We become more loving as a person. We become someone that is not easily angry, not easily get swayed by our feeling. We gain something that is more beautiful, that is more eternal. And as we win, as we uh, as we uh, experience breakthrough in our life through those times, we can help others. We can multiply in others the similar strength to, to look at the word of God and counter God in that word and then see our life turn into something beautiful, fruitful, and we can see the multiplication in our life and the life of others. So there is never wasted time with God when we walk with him, as we hold on to him in each season and each uh, time that we have to go through in this world, we will see the beauty of all of that. So uh, let's just read together the first 11 from wherever you are. It says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their heart, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. So God, even I don't understand what is going on. I don't, and my human mind cannot understand what you had planned and the purpose that you have in me. One thing that we can hold on, the hope that in each season and each time of our life, you had a beautiful purpose in it. And then you had put eternal 
inside our heart. So through it, we can see not just us blessed, but also the breakthrough that we are facing will become breakthrough for many others. And uh, I pray that going through the season of pandemic, uh, it's been quite long, maybe longer than what we expect, but there is never a wasted time or season with God. Let us come into a place where God, how I'm going to respond to this. And we believe through the right response, we will know and we will be able to see and we'll be able to experience the beauty that God promised through his word. Thank you and God bless you. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you that you such a wonderful God. You have a wonderful plan for each one of us. And even you already put the eternal plan, purpose, treasure inside each one of us. That whatever happened in our life, we always going to see beauty come out from it. Beauty come out from it. We thank you, Lord God, that never a time is wasted in you, Lord God. But everything happened for a purpose, and we can hold on unto your unto the hope in you, Lord God, and we can rise up in our faith and not let fear come and stop us from growing, from being fruitful and being multiplied, Lord God. We just thank you that you are with us in each season. Thank you that you're Emmanuel, God that is with us. We surrender our life and uh, whatever, that had hap whatever that had happened in the past, we surrender it to you and whatever going to happen in the future, we thank you that you're with us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Hallelujah. We're about to take part in our Holy Communion today. Brothers and sisters, let us come with the right heart. Before we take part in this Holy Communion, let us remember that we are doing this in remembrance of God's mercy, of God's love. That he died for you and for me on the cross. He died for you and for me to wash away all our sins, all our curse. So that we don't die but shall live for his glory. Let us just close our eyes. And let us just come to God with the right manner today. We are doing this in remembrance of God. So let us come to him and be at peace with God, beloved. Be at peace with God. And be at peace with others. And be at peace with yourself. Just open up your hearts. If God is reminding you of the things that we have done in the past week, let us just confess our sins to God, our transgressions, and let Him restore you. And if God reminds you of the things that you have done to others and what others have done to you. Let's just be at peace with others. Convey forgiveness and receive forgiveness from God. Ask for forgiveness and be at peace with yourself. And we know that sometimes the mistakes that we have done in the past is haunting us. But if God has forgiven you, you can also forgive yourself. Let's just take a short moment, maybe just 20 seconds, 30 seconds, just come to God and open up your heart. We are doing this, respecting God, honoring God, while we are being reminded of the cross of His love. Father God, I pray for your children as we are taking part in this Holy Communion today. I pray that you heal us. You heal your children. You restore us. You transform your children. Let the peace of heaven be upon you. Let the joy of heaven be upon you. Thank you, Lord. And I pray as we take part in this Holy Communion, even miracles shall happen to your people. Healings shall happen. Restoration shall happen. And blessings shall be granted upon your people. Thank you, Lord. We are ready for the Holy Communion. For I have received of the Lord 
that which I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. Let us lift the bread high to him. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Beloved saints of God, isn't the bread that we broke and partake is our fellowship and communion with the body of Christ Jesus? Amen. Let us take it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now let us lift up the cup high to him also. Hallelujah. In the same manner, he also took part. The took cup after supper, saying, This cup is the covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Beloved saints of God, isn't this cup upon which we give thanks is our fellowship and communion with the blood of Christ Jesus? Amen. Let's drink it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Give him thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the body broken for us. Thank you for the blood shed for us. Thank you, Lord, that we are already healed. By the stripes of Jesus, we are already healed. Our sins were washed away. And we know that heaven awaits us. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for your children again. Heal your children. Restore your children. Bring blessings to your children. Thank you, Lord. We give you honor. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, let us lift up your hands, open up your hearts, and receive the blessings. Our Lord Jesus Christ loves you and me so very much that he will bless you, that he will keep you. That our Lord Jesus will lift up his countenance upon you. And give you peace. May the grace and abundant blessings from our Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones today until Jesus Christ comes again even throughout eternity forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Happy Sunday and God bless you.